1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, He who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And out of that oneness, Acts 17, 28 reveals, we live and move and have our being. So the question then becomes, not how much of the Holy Spirit we've been given, but how much of ourselves we give to the Holy Spirit. This is Spirit Reboot. Some of the most anointed men and women of God in the world are not pastors, they're not preachers, they're not your worship leaders, because the first will be last and the last will be first. They have come to the end of themselves and the realization that there's nothing you can do to add or subtract from the finished work of Christ on that cross. And understand His plan to send the Holy Spirit is God's will for each and every believer. When you tap into the faith and confidence that what you have available to you is above and beyond anything that you could bring to the table, a shift occurs. Because you know that the miraculous is within your reach, it's within your grasp, and you'll throw off self for something far greater than yourself, for something supernatural. It's inside, it's within you. It's a parallel world, a river, of possibilities you dive into because your faith and confidence has been diverted to another source, a source of power that transcends your limitations. You begin to get a sense of what God wants to do through you and what He can do through you simply because you love it. You begin to realize it was there all along and you already qualify. By grace through faith, you already qualify. It's not for the elite or ministry school graduate. Relationship is our only credential. Apart from me, you can do nothing, Jesus said. God gives grace to the humble, but opposes the proud. Who are the proud? Those who rely upon their own strength and accomplishments. Jesus said, many will come to me on that day who didn't know me but boasted about their performance and what they did for me through their giftings. But I said, get away from me. I never knew you. There's no relationship because at the end of the day, all that counts, all that matters is how well we know him. And we know him through the suffering, through the crushing, through the testing, through the times in our lives when we find the face of the Father in the midst of failure and brokenness when you have no other recourse but to depend upon and look upon and lean upon a far greater authority and resource than this realm affords you. When you get a taste of what stands in front of you, there's something inside of you that says, go for it, make a run for it, and never look back. Long for Him right now and purpose in your heart that you will walk down that aisle and you will make him and him alone your husband. In Jesus' name I pray.